And joining us now in the studio is Vincent J. Russo from the Russo Law Group. Today on this fifth day of the new year, we are going to talk about New Year's resolutions and hopefully sticking to them. Happy New Year, Vincent. Happy New Year to you. So you've been doing some researching for us and checking out the top <clears throat> resolutions. Yes, it was very interesting because depending on the segment that you asked, the population segment, you got different answers. But generally, I, you got a top five list and then the other five kind of varied. Okay. So first, you ready? I know this. I know this. <laughs> you know one. this one, right? Every year, this one. <laughs> exercise more, yeah. right? Um, we, all, we all need to exercise more. Uh, two is lose weight. Check. Uh, <clears throat> three, <laughs> save money, more money, or spend less money. I guess you can go either way, right? Uh, five, look for a new job or pursue a career. Six, learn a new skill or hobby. Seven, live life to the fullest. Hmm. That would have been a nice number one. Yeah, really. <laughs> Eight, travel more, but you know, COVID right. and the pandemic, yep. that's, that's a challenge. Nine, I really like, raise money for charity and do volunteer work. Mm -hmm. And 10, quit smoking. Mm, that's a tough one for a lot of people too. Right. But that that's number right. one, exercise more, you know, lose weight, all these things to improve ourselves. That's right. And we try. And, and what was interesting um, was that um, most people will pick one or two resolutions, and that's a really good idea, not to have like 10 of them, right? right? So 74% of the people picked one or two, basically broke out 50-50. The bad news was that 4% in a survey uh, reflected that they met all their goals, their resolutions, only 4%, Four. Four and then 8% said most, 13% failed completely, so then I had to look for another survey, so I found a better one. <laughs> <laughs> so another survey said 46% were successful. So I'm going to go with one out of two. Yeah. All right, I'm going to be optimistic. And I, I'm guessing the ones that are <laughs> successful are the ones that, you know, you're not trying to do too much right away. Correct. Right? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Set some good goals, realistic goals, and start out slow. And I have to admit, that's what I'm doing this year. Because too often, you know, I, I go way big, and I'm, I'm a part of that group that, fails pretty quickly. Okay. And if you do fail, I'm trying, this is my own mindset right now, just don't give up. Oh yeah, absolutely, you don't know, give up. Right, one That's day right. doesn't mean it's over, so just get back and say okay. Yep, Let's focus again. So my number one is exercise this year. You know, yeah. I, I didn't even make a resolution last year. Last year was such a strange year, I mm. just was like okay, what happens, happens. <laughs> so it, your number one again? Is exercise more. Exercise more. Because right. I don't, wouldn't have to do much to exercise more. Okay, so what are you going to do? What's your first step there? <laughs> I, I'm trying 15, <laughs> 15 minutes. Just start at 15 minutes well, a day. That's great. Yeah. That's I, great. Actually, yesterday I got home from work. One of my sons says, I, he, he texted me, you home from work? I'm like, yeah, go exercise. Like, All right. Okay, so I can do this. Yeah. yeah. Now, what I liked was that uh, number four was spend more time with family and friends. So for me, focusing in on family. And during the holidays, it can be so challenging. Uh, some families really rejoice in getting together and, and it and makes everyone stronger. And then some other families, there are real challenges mm -hmm. because of the relationships. So I think a really good resolution would be building stronger bonds with your family members. You know, parents to children and grandchildren, siblings. You and I are both in big families. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some challenges. And right, right. <laughs> Right. <laughs> so sometimes too after the holidays now we've we've you know left these big family gatherings and we left with some challenges and maybe maybe approach you know figure out how to fix that. Right. With you're saying communication is the key. Yeah, conversations. Conversations. You know, and and I often see families and when I do estate planning and work with families, uh, that the problem arises when people are uncomfortable in, in communicating and sharing what they really think and believe. And, and, and that can lead to people getting off track as well when, when there's no conversation or when they have a conversation that goes south. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, and often those conversations go south because of two things. One, we tell a story in our head as to what the reality of the situation is, sometimes ignoring the facts. <laughs> and two, we get emotional. You know, we just emotionally react and, and then we regret after we say certain things. Right. So there are some tools out there. There's a wonderful book called Crucial Conversations. 
And, and in that book, there are tools to help people communicate better and for families to build stronger bonds. And so, I, you know, I recommend it. A crucial conversation is when the stakes are high, opinions vary, uh, and, and uh, emotions run strong. And that's in every family, I would, right. or most families. Yeah, because I see, unfortunately, uh, parents who don't communicate uh, with their children and don't share their, for example, their estate plan, uh, and, and they struggle sometimes as to who to leave assets to and in what way. And then after the parent passes, the children get together and they say, what did mom or dad think? Why did they do what they did? And it's all because there was no real communication going on in the family through the years. Right, we're afraid to talk about that. That's right. And that's another important point is in, when you're having a conversation with someone, you need to make sure that they feel comfortable, that they feel safe, that their, their opinion will be heard, as opposed to, you know, having a conversation and just telling them this is the way it's going to be. Hmm. You know, that's never going to work. And so uh, that, that safety net for that person you're communicating with is so important to build. That's great advice because you yeah. are always talking to families and you see the dynamics there yeah. when these difficult dis discussions have to be made, these conversations. Right. Right, and then always there are, there are professionals out there who can help. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we're brought in to help with family meetings, and, you know, where, you know, just siblings aren't talking and the parents feel distressed that what's gonna happen when I'm not here and is, uh, is my daughter and son, they're gonna get along and, yeah. and everybody wants the best, you know, in, the, in that survey that, you know, resolutions, it's really about, you know, being happy, mm -hmm. happy with yourself, happy with your health, your finances, and then your family. Yeah, if you're happy, right, you can make other people happy. So you gotta start with yourself and uh, definitely work at it with your right. family if it's not working. That's right, and, and that's the starting point, okay. yourself. And the book is again, what is Crucial, it? Conversations. Crucial Conversations. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you very Excellent. much. Happy, happy new year for yes, you, your you. family, all our families. Absolutely. Thanks, Vincent. Same.